We are pleased to welcome to Van Arts Radio, Graham Annabel. Graham is a uh, Academy Award nominated animation director. He's won awards for graphic novels, comics, and you can just kind of Google him. He's a very busy guy. But I need to congratulate you for, to start off. Your Kickstarter that you just <laughs> finished today doubled the amount of, of um, your target. Yeah. W- what was the Kickstarter campaign on? Uh, it was on a, a, a figurine of a character from one of my animated shorts, uh, uh, and w- The Hidden People, what, which are these little red gnomes. Okay. Uh, what, what was the animated short? Uh, the animated short's called The Hidden People, actually. Okay. I should also say, actually, this character has appeared in a video game series that I designed called Puzzle Agent. Okay. And uh, the Hidden People played a very big villainous role in that. Okay. And the Puzzle Agent, what was that a video game you designed, or what's the premise behind that? I've been hearing a lot about that lately. Yeah, it's a it's a game that there was uh, two two Puzzle Agent games made, uh, and it was by a bunch of my friends who all run Telltale Games okay. in Northern California. And long ago, they approached me about pitching a Grickle style game. And at that time I was really into Professor Layton. I don't okay. know if anybody here remembers mm-hmm, those games, mm-hmm. but they're all puzzly and yeah. story based. And it seemed like a perfect uh venue for for exploring the Grickle world with. Okay. And so Puzzle Agent was born. And Grickle is your uh, YouTube channel mm-hmm. with uh, I think thirty thousand, around thirty thousand subscribers. Yep. What what's the inspiration behind that one? That is sort of stemmed out of my need to express myself. Okay. Uh, and uh, I work as a story artist most of the time at Leica. Yeah. And early days working on Coraline, we were asked as a story team to utilize iMovie software at that point okay. to come up with our own little animated sequences. And that got me in a position where I realized I could make short films on my own really quickly and yeah. easily. And it got very addictive. And the internet being the internet, I could put movies out in front of everyone at any time. Oh, that's really cool. And so it hasn't stopped now, and it's been about 11 years of me doing 11 it. 11 years. That's, that's so cool. It's crazy. Now, Coraline. Coraline, <clears throat> me growing up, I'm like 20. Uh-huh. Uh, growing up, that was one of my favorite movies to watch. I was a big fan. I watched yeah. it like three times in the theater. I even bought the DVD and yeah. t- took it home, watched it so many times. What was it like working on that movie? A movie I love so much. It was a little crazy, uh, and but really special. Uh, it was the first time for me that I'd ever worked in stop motion. Okay, I'd worked in animation and you know hand drawn, and I'd worked in CG. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, working in stop motion, I had never anticipated the sort of magical element of it. Uh, I remember when the first sets were completed for Coraline, we got to go down stairs and check them out. Yeah, and it was Other Mother's house. I don't know if you remember, but yeah. you know, and it was. This miniaturized house with this beautiful night sky behind it. Okay. And the minute you walked into that curtained area, you were transported. I mean, you were actually at Other Mother's house. It was oh, it just, so you could cool. feel the atmosphere in the room. There's no other form of animation that feels like that. Yeah. No matter how impressive a drawing is or mm-hmm. how cool an effect is on a computer screen, nothing equals something physical being there actually existing in front of you like that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to jump to the future for a little bit. <laughs> with this, with all these new Netflix and other online shows are all animated, where do you think the future of animation is heading? I couldn't even dare to try to predict you, that, you uh, but I am excited by it. Yeah. Uh, I, again, doing my YouTube channel. I mm-hmm. mean, coming from, you know, learning animation back in the early 90s, the amount of access people have to create their own productions and to get them seen and without a lot of sort of middle management as to who sees what, uh, it's just, I think it's amazing. I think we just see so much more content now than we ever did. Of course. And so many different views than we ever did before. Yeah. And then growing up, uh, mm-hmm. was there a specific moment in your childhood that you were like, I want to be an animator. I, this is what I want to do. No. There was nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. I, I, I mean, I was an obsessive doodler. Uh-huh. And I was completely into making my own comic books okay. and comic strips. Yeah. Uh, a huge fan of Charles Schultz's Peanuts. Oh, yeah. That really affected me. Yeah. Uh, but when I was getting ready to graduate high school, I didn't know what I could do with that ability. Uh, but I was also really into film. Okay. And at that time in my mind, comics plus film equals animation. And so I ended up applying at Sheridan college uh, just outside of Toronto. Yeah. And that's where I truly began to learn the actual process of animation. Up to that point, I really didn't know anything about it. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. I uh, can check out your 
a channel on YouTube called Grickle, mm-hmm. right? Is there any, any other place that we can find you? Uh, if you go to Grickle.com, it'll lead you to all things Grickle. All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Appreciate thanks for it. having me. Thank you.